Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday, July 14th. Not a bad morning at all here in the Mid-Atlantic region. Dew points are anywhere from the upper 50s to the low to mid 60s. Not bad at all for the middle part of July. And afternoon highs in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Not all that f far from normal. Moderately warm conditions, maybe the mid to upper 80s in Philly and uh, New York City and the upper 80s in D.C., which is close to normal for this time of the year. And it stays pretty decent again on Wednesday. It'll gradually get a little hotter as we go towards the end of the week, reaching 90 degrees for highs, uh, certainly uh, by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It also continues to remain rain-free in the Mid-Atlantic region. Looks like we'll have another couple of days with rain-free conditions. And the next chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms looks like it'll come late Thursday or Thursday night with the approach of a frontal system. Well, I thought we'd do a couple things today. First of all, talk about the comet, comet Neowise, and also take a, a, a look at the tropical situation over the next uh, week or two. It looks rather quiet, but there are, certainly are uh, possibilities of activity beyond that. First of all, in terms of the comet, Pretty good viewing conditions last night in the Mid-Atlantic region. There were a few clouds around that caused some problems. Very uh, blue sky this morning with, again, relatively dry conditions, so potentially good viewing conditions tonight for Comet Neowise. This is a map that's available on spaceweather.com, and I just want to point out the, uh, the location of Comet Neowise. Really, the best way to go out and observe it tonight will be first locate the Big Dipper way up here in the sky and then pretty much go straight down and you'll find Comet Neowise in the northwestern sky low to the horizon but uh, pretty visible especially if you have binoculars of course you have to be away from uh, light pollution go out into a, a park or, or a place like that and you have to have good view of the uh, horizon area in the northwest sky. And this is the number of degrees here. It's about 320 degrees at the northwest part of the horizon. You can use your cell phone, your mobile phone, to pull up the compass and find about 320 degrees or so and look in that general direction. Again, another tip is to find the Big Dipper way up in the sky and pretty much go straight down, maybe a little bit down and to the right from there to near the horizon, <clears throat> excuse me, best time to do this is about an hour or so after sunset. Sunset right now in the uh, eastern time zone is about 8.30, so we're talking about maybe 9.30 or so, that's when I saw it last night, and I really required binoculars uh, where I was viewing it, but you could look closer to the horizon, of course you need that view of the horizon without trees being in the way. This will get better and better in terms of viewing over the next a week to 10 days or so as it will climb higher and higher in the sky to closer to the Big Dipper. And I have a full posting on Comet Neowise right now on the, uh, the main page, the home page of PerspectaWeather.com. But again, should be good viewing conditions again this evening, uh, certainly throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Well, let's just take a quick peek here around the tropical zones around the world. Not much activity at all. Still relatively early for the Atlantic Basin tropical season now in the middle part of July, but a little bit surprising that it's totally quiet at the moment. We'll take a look at the, the latest outbreak of Saharan dust, quite widespread in the Atlantic, and that could be reducing the chances right now, and maybe for the next week to 10 days or so for tropical activity in the Pacific. There is a low pressure area, but nothing substantial right now. The Pacific Ocean has certainly been below normal with uh, both the Eastern Pacific and the Western Pacific quieter than normal for this time of the year. Now, the Atlantic Basin, we have had a lot of storms uh, up through six right now, the last one being Tropical Storm Fay over uh, the uh, the latter part of last week, but the uh, 
the number of storms is high, but the overall strength and duration of these storms has been relatively low. We measure that with what we call the ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy, and that's uh, certainly nothing to write home about right now. It's uh, all of these storms so far this year in the Atlantic Basin have remained tropical storm status and have been rather short-lived and many of the uh, storms have been relatively weak as well. A couple of storms in fact lasted less than 24 hours out over the Atlantic Ocean. The last one of course uh, that had an impact was Tropical Storm Fay. It uh, cut across the northern half of New Jersey on Friday and moved to a position over the Hudson River Valley of New York State and caused a lot of rainfall in the eastern part of the Mid-Atlantic region. But right now, quiet on the tropical scene in the Atlantic Basin and relatively quiet out across the Pacific Ocean as well. Well, one of the reasons it very well may be quiet right now in the Atlantic Basin, and we had to deal with this earlier, this tropical season is another outbreak of dry Saharan desert air that has moved off the African west coast into the Atlantic Ocean, the tropical Atlantic. And this particular map available on the University of Wisconsin CIMSS website shows the dry air in orange and red. And basically this is the air that has come off the west coast of Africa. And here is the west coast of Africa right here. And all of this air rides along in the trade winds that uh, push this dry air from the east to the west. And all of this in orange and red extends all the way really into the Gulf of Mexico across the Caribbean Sea, represents dry air, and that is definitely an inhibiting factor to either the formation of tropical storms in the Atlantic Basin or the intensification. This is predicted to dissipate over the next five to ten days or so, so we may be relatively quiet for another week or so, but then activity, look for activity to uh, return during the latter part of the month of July. Well, let's take a look at last night's Zig Z uh, operational run of the GFS. Again, relatively quiet for the next couple of days in the Mid-Atlantic region. Rain-free conditions, uh, no excessive heat, moderately warm, rather seasonal right now. I think the normal high in D.C. is about 89 degrees, maybe 87 in Philly, 85 in New York City, not far from normal over the next couple of days. And we have reached middle part of July without any sustained period of excessive heat. Uh, uh, generally highs have been in the 90 to 94 degree range in the hottest weather that we've experienced so far. No excessive heat so far, at least not for a sustained period of time in the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, decent conditions here with dew points anywhere from the upper 50s to lower 60s as we begin the day on Tuesday. Again, relatively uh, Rain-free throughout the Mid-Atlantic region, maybe a few scattered showers up across New England, but again this evening looks like it'll present good viewing conditions for Comet Neowise. Look in the northwest sky, low, close to the horizon, and better if you have binoculars to find it. And then we see this weak frontal system, nothing really all that strong, but that's the next weather maker for the Mid-Atlantic region. Remains relatively close to normal in terms of temperatures on Wednesday and still under the influence of high, even signs of a backdoor cool front. You see high pressure up across New England like this or southeastern Canada, you have to watch out for a backdoor cool front. That could kind of reinforce the moderate uh, temperatures around here for another uh, 24 hours or so on Wednesday going into the day on Thursday here. But high pressure to the north stays in control at midweek and then we go into the day on Thursday. This high starts to shift farther to the south uh, and east and that'll kind of open the door for hotter and more humid air. Again, nothing excessive looking for Thursday and Friday. Uh, maybe uh, 90 degrees, maybe in the lower 90s across DC. Here's that next weak frontal system as we begin the day on Thursday. Could produce some scattered showers and thunderstorms probably holding off until early Thursday night, a, a weak frontal system. It kind of stalls out in the area. This is the forecast map for Friday. So we'll have a continuation 
of the threat of scattered showers and thunderstorms it looks like on Friday and probably on Saturday and Sunday as well as that weak frontal system stalls out in the mid-Atlantic region. So again, decent temperatures and humidity levels for the next couple of days. It does get hotter towards the uh, latter part of the week going into the weekend, but it doesn't look like excessive heat. Again, another evening with good viewing conditions for Comet Neowise. Low to the, to the horizon in the northwest sky. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.